This is Power Beyond More with Business Solutions MVPs Scott Sewell and Joel Lindstrom. This episode is sponsored by Kingsway Soft. Kingsway Soft is a leading integration solution provider offering software solutions that make data integrations affordable and painlessly easy. Check out their autumn 2017 release at kingswaysoft.com. Featuring multi-threaded writing, support for Dynamics 365 version 9, integration with Eloqua and Oracle Marketing Cloud, and ETL Documentation Generator. As an early holiday gift, uh, I think you brought your your grab bag with you. Yeah, some nice, some uh, a couple of really valuable things popped across um, my attention span, short attention span this week, and I thought I'd share those with you um, because they all have they have like different different uses, but really important things to keep be aware of. Uh, first thing I'd I'd call your attention to is there is a white paper on Power BI security and deployment that's, that's excellent. It's from Microsoft, and there was a revision to it that was released, uh, I guess it was released yesterday, that includes Power BI Premium. Uh, so if you have looked at that document in the past, take another look at it. Um, you'll find it, uh, if you just search for Power BI Service Administrator Security uh, White Paper, you'll find really good in, inf- insights into good deployments and security models for Power BI. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those topic areas that gets overlooked a little bit, mostly because it's so easy to just jump in and start creating dashboards and uh, how fun that is. Uh, the sort of the more enterprise-y type approach that's probably necessary if you're dealing with something more than just a, you know, stuff on your own desktop or just a really small work group. If you're trying to deploy to a larger group, larger audience, take a look at that white paper and it's got some really good insights into it. So that's a, that's a useful one. Okay. So, so when you talk, talk about power BI security, is it talking about access to the backend data sources or is it talking about access to the databases or, or just overall the whole stack? Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a bit of the whole stack. It, it really focuses on, if I have a database or if I have a, a, a dashboard, a, a dashboard is probably the right way to refer for it, a dashboard that I want to publish to a number of people and I want to control who has access to it as well as I want to control uh, what, they have, what they have access to through the dashboard, how do I go about that? Um, it's, there are, you know, obviously if you're dealing with a, a five people in a work group, and that's all you have to worry about. Yeah, it's you can sneaker net it around. You know, it's no problem. Uh, but you're dealing with trying to deploy it across an enterprise. It's a different ball game. So, um, so that's that's what this this white paper takes a look at. It's got um, it's actually got really good information around the architecture, how you authenticate to Power BI, um, how do you set up users, and then also now with the ability to share dashboards to people outside your organization. Uh, where do you go to configure the who, who within your organization is allowed to publish? An, uh, you know, there's an option to publish a dashboard to the web, um, which you can basically just sh- shove that dashboard right out on the World Wide Web, and everybody and their dog can look it up, can open it. Um, you don't want everybody doing that. <laughs> you want control over that. So this document walks through some of the security models you need to pay attention to. Um, there's some configurations in uh, uh, Office 365 that you would pay attention to as an administrator. Um, it goes through all the processes around how do you get the data from, you know, the data security behind the scenes, what goes on. It's just a really good, um, it's a, if nothing else, it's a good thing to look at to make sure you haven't overlooked the obvious. Or the not so obvious. So take so a now, look at that. A lot of a lot of people start really small with Power BI. One one person with Power BI desktop, or yeah. you know, messing around, and then it, they share it out, and it grows up. And before long, you got a lot of people sharing this stuff. You know, I can imagine it's the kind of thing you need to reevaluate your security as you grow, because yeah. what worked for you know a five person work group once you once you share a lot, uh, the more people, the more risk there is that somebody who 
shouldn't have access to something sees something or it gives them access to it. Yeah. And, and additionally, there's times where, you know, I want to share it to, uh, to my entire team. How do I do that without just individually looking up every user and pushing it out there? How do I make sure that the people who are on my team who get added to my team or taken off my team, um, get access to the dashboard without me having to fool with it? Um, who, who do I allow to share the dashboard that they have to somebody else? You know, do I allow somebody else to extend this dashboard out or do I allow them to make changes to it? Um, again, you're, you're right. As you, when you're dealing with a work group, it's usually not a problem. Um, just like the same thing, same idea as if you have an Excel file in a share folder, you know, you got three or four people working on it. No big deal. You know, everybody's got a, you know, everybody's, knows how to make sure that they get updated, get it updated. And, you know, hopefully nobody's sorting by a wrong column or something like that. But, you know, you start moving up to an inner, uh, a larger group, you need to put some governance over top of it. So this is a good one to, to take a look at from that perspective. Absolutely. What, Sweet. what else you got in your, uh, goodie bag there, Sewell Claus? Yeah. Speaking of pushing out some good stuff, uh, Microsoft, as is, is, you know, there is a every month there is a new version of Microsoft uh, Power BI Desktop that's that's released. And uh, I was working with a customer up in Canada this week. And one of the things I'd, I'd forgotten about is as soon as you install it, it prompts you saying, "Hey, give me your username, your your name, and your email address, and what company you work for, and add me to your mailing list." There is a there's a dialogue that pops up up front and it's prompting you for all that information. Um, there's you, there's not really a, through the UI, there's not really a good way to cancel that and say, Hey, I don't want to give you information right now. Um, and really the only way to get around it through the UI is just to fill in the information or put in bogus information and save it. However, uh, just for you, just this week for our special time, or just for our listeners, <laughs> there is a, um, a GPO, a, glo- a group policy object that you can deploy from, uh, at, from as you, to your network that will block that login prompt or that uh, request for information. You can either do it on a desktop for your own self for a, a reg- as a registry setting, or you can push it out from the network. From the, as an administrator, you can push it out to all desktops so that when you install Power BI, it doesn't prompt you for that username and password. So mm, okay. It's a, I mean, a username and email address. It's really just a collection. You know, it's a way of collecting email to send. You know, they're creating a big mailing list of everybody who's tried out Power BI so they can send tips to you, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, so is there is that only a group policy thing, or is if you want to do that on your individual machine, is there a way to do it? Yeah, you can do it as a re- as a registry entry by on your own self. But if you um, if you uninstall and reinstall Power BI, it's going to come back. It, it it loses that uh, reg key. Or you know, and again, like I said, if you put it out as a uh, group policy object, uh, it'll take care of everybody. All all always and forever. So it's really useful. Cool. This so is I'm good put, stuff, Scott. Yeah. So go to, for that, uh, go to manage the Power BI desktop sign-in form. And I, I presume um, you'll be able to put this in the show notes as well. Yeah, I got it. This. I got Great. it. Awesome. I knew you did. So um, there's another cool thing that's come out. But wait, um, there's more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, totally. If there's a um, uh, there's a PDF that Microsoft has released, uh, it's called something like um, Zero to Beautiful. I don't know exactly what to what to call it. I think that's what I found the name of it as. But it's a really nice uh, cheat sheet on how to make a good decision on what type of visual to use when you're building a report. Should you use a pie chart? Should you use a um, a bar a bar chart or a line chart? What is the right time, uh, the right choices to make in those in that process? And it's a you know it's only like twenty pages. It's a really nice uh, you know zero to beautiful choosing the charts for data visualization, and it just goes through the different types of charts um, that you would use in 
in Power BI, like a line chart or a uh, column chart, and it gives you a little description of what it is and then also when to use it. Um, I find that people who are who are new to Power BI, and I'll count myself in this in this category. When I started out, I wanted to use all the you know how many types are there? All of them. I want to use all of them. Uh, it's like uh, using how many fonts do you want to use? All of them. Uh, I had I had every. I mean, I wanted to have a variety of everything. Well, in truth, there's different ways you can display different data, um, and there's there's there you can take the same data and show it in multiple ways but this gives you some some guidelines on best practices it's a simple pdf it's very easy to follow um it just gives you really nice rules of thumb on when to use different types especially if you're just getting started it'll help you avoid some of the beginner mistakes um that are so even, would that apply to other reporting tools as yes. well? I mean, could you take the advice and use it in Excel or uh, CRM absolutely. charts or some other some other kind of uh, re- visualization tool? Absolutely. There are a handful of them that point out that I know that the example they use is, looks like Power BI, but all of this is written from a generic perspective. Uh, it's not a Power BI specific. I mean, if you wanted to put charts in a um, Excel using this, you can use these guidelines. It's all, it's really all about best practices and, uh, thoughtful, thought, thoughtful uses to when different types of charts or KPI visualizations are, uh, are best. So take a look at that one. Um, it's a, I mean, I would say it's fairly, uh, introductory, if somebody's getting used to, if you're if you're helping coach somebody uh, to get used, get them started in Power BI, because it gives them a good overview and a summary of why choose different visualizations when they have so many choices available to them. So, so you don't, so they don't say, "I want to compare salespeople with a pie chart." Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and hope, and I would, I would hope that they never use funnel chart, but that's a that's a. Does it tell you never to use a funnel on there? I would hope so, but it doesn't, I don't think, <laughs> sadly. Um, one other uh, visualization reference that I would encourage you to use. This is kind of the first one I shared was is more of a b- introductory uh, visualization tool. This one, the second one, is much more advanced. Um, and it's been updated. It was updated recently, but I'd point you to... SQL BI, uh, if you go to SQLBI.com, there's a Power BI visual reference there that you can get, and it's a PDF you can download from them. Uh, about 100 or so different visualizations on there, and they categorize them with, uh, whether it's a, a visualization trying to use show comparisons or changes over time or distribution or correlation, uh, it's taking, you know, what am I trying to present? And then it shows the visualizations that are good for that topic area. But even more importantly, it points out the ones that they don't recommend. Mm. Now, there's probably some con- there's probably some of these that are controversial. But it's really nice that they have this idea in there that some of these are good and some of them are not good. Um you know, and they call out some of their own visualizations that they've shared and point them to here's one that's not a good one for this usage. Um, some of the out of the box ones they point out as being not good. Um, some of them, like the ribbon chart, they include it as a valid one for ranking, but a poor one for comparison. So taking a taking a look at that would be. Um, uh, is a is a really good, you know, counter. And if they if they uh, uh, if they say it's not a good one for the type of information you're trying to present, at least it makes you think about it before you just slap it on there uh, without without uh, without thinking. So it's a it's a useful one. Or if you're looking for, uh, I'm trying to do a correlation. What's a good one? To, what are some options that are out there that maybe I haven't thought of yet? Um, so take a look at that one. But the guys at Power BI, uh, SQL, excuse me, SQL BI, 
release that. This version, the current one, is uh, September 2017. Uh, I suspect there'll be another one after the first of the year. But uh, so these tell you these tell you what kind of visualizations to use in in looking at be- to be beautiful as well. Do they talk about how to lay things out in a beautiful way as well? No, neither one of them talk about like the overall aesthetic. Um, I've got a guy on my team that uh, just crushes it every time he puts up he puts it together a dashboard. He just has a visual aesthetic eye for uh, for layout, so that things are, are you know when you look at it, it's you're quick to comprehend what's going on. Um, I don't have that eye when I when I build a dashboard. Uh, mine I have to fight it pretty pretty hard to get my dashboard to look good um yeah this guy just puts it up and it looks it looks awesome to start with you need to you need to either have both both parts of your brain the artistic and the and the uh logical parts working together or you need to have two people that are good at each one that can get the great analysis and get the get the great crunch the numbers and the other one that can can say how to make it look good I agree. There's a, a time where I, um, not too long ago, I put up the Titanic uh, dashboard that I uh, beat to death, um, put that up and showed it to somebody and just ask them, tell me what you, tell me what you, uh, why don't you look at that and get, tell me what you think about it. I'm not going to tell you what you, what you know, but, or what I, what it's supposed to do. Just tell me what you think it does. And, there were some of them that were really obvious and they jumped out and people were like, Oh, that really makes sense. And there were some, about it, some like, mm, I'm not sure what you're trying to get, what, what point you're trying to make here. Um, and it was really useful feedback because I don't know, you, you know, it's the same idea if you're, when you, when you write a document and you're trying to check your own spelling, um, you don't see, you know what it meant, what you meant to say. Uh, and when you read it yourself, you don't have those, um, you don't have those fresh eyes on it to say, does this really mean what I meant for it to mean? Um, does it convey, does it communicate what I'm trying to communicate? So I, I'd encourage you to, to take a look at those and, and see if that just kind of improves your visual language <laughs> to say, to say it one way. Yeah. Well, I think it's good. Well, thanks. Thanks, Santa Scott. You're no Grinch. <laughs> I know, man. And, uh, take a look at the latest version of power BI. It just came out. It should be out, uh, by the time this is released, it should be out. I've got the beta of it. Uh, some really nice enhancements to some of the features we got last month. And uh, keep it up to date and uh, enjoy. Thanks, Joel. All right. Thanks, Scott. This has been the Power BI and More podcast with business solution MVPs Scott Sewell and Joel Lindstrom. This podcast is a production of Dynamic Podcasts, LLC. Follow Scott Sewell on Twitter at Scott Sewell. Subscribe to the CRM Audio Network of Podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, TuneIn, or any place else that fine podcasts are available. You can email us at voice at crm.audio. Thanks again to our sponsors, Kingsway Soft and Alexa CRM.